Hope everybody's doing well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to subscribe, I'd love to have you. Today, I'm going to talk to you about um, a favorite recipe of mine. And what I discovered today really makes me sick at heart. I'm, I'm just beside myself right now and you might think it's ridiculous because it's a recipe but if you knew how I treasured recipes you would understand or if you do treasure recipes recipes you understand these were a couple of my favorite Amish cookbooks that I kept and the one that's missing and I hope it's just at this point misplaced I hope is called I believe horse and buggy recipes. I can't find it. And I'm sad. Now, I do have one or two little book uh, boxes still left that there may be a few cookbooks in there, but I can't imagine why it wouldn't have been with this group. Um, but it is... Oh! That just reminds me. I just thought of something. I think I might know where it's at. Okay, I'm going to start over. Ooh, I'm so excited because I did find the cookbook. And this is the cookbook. It's called Cooking with the Horse and Buggy People. And um, this is where the origination of this recipe that I adapted for my own use came from. And um, I just had a little mini heart attack this morning because I was thinking that, um, oh my gosh, what did I do in our past few moves I scaled down my cookbooks a ton because I had so many of them and just kept the ones that were really special to me because a lot of times what I do do is I write inside the cookbooks like this particular cookbook here um, it's called Der Deutschmann Amish Kitchen Cooking Cookbook it says um, this book belongs to me and has my name in it I purchased it in the name of the town, Ohio, on our Christmas trip home in 1991 at a very small Amish store while visiting Grandma and Grandpa. And so I have made a ton of recipes in here that I've really liked and, um, you know, have just found their way to our table many times. And sometimes I even make really little tiny notes in my cookbooks like this one says, this is so easy and so good. Um, sometimes I'll make a note that says, um, this one says very good recipe um, I substituted uh, pre-sifted flour also I mean just little notes so I remember if I make it again sometimes I just say uh, not nah, not a favorite won't make again um, but anyway so I kept some of the cookbooks that were really good cookbooks for me that I made many many recipes from and donated gave away or sold at garage sales a whole lot of them um, especially now with um, you know the internet and Pinterest and Facebook and <laughs> recipes are at your fingertips but I love to sit down with a good cookbook and just read through a cookbook I love it I mean it's to me it's inspiring and there's just nothing better than holding a book in your hand and I I'm just have never been able to adapt myself to the um, reader things you know whatever you call them mm slips my mind right now but a good book I just love the feel of it the smell of it everything so anyways I had a little mini heart attack this morning because I thought that the recipe I'm going to talk about was in this book and I'm going through it I can't find it can't find it so I pulled my other cookbook and went through it can't find it can't find it and my other cookbooks are hardback and I'm like I know it's not in there it's in a binder cookbook and I just thought oh no Maybe I donated it or gave it away by accident. I was just, even though I have the recipe reprinted um, to the way I tweaked it, I just wanted the original, but I had it in the special place where my special cookbooks are, and I, all of a sudden it dawned on me. So, cooking with horse and buggy people. Looks like I didn't do a whole lot of writing in it, but I purchased this in Ohio, and I want to say probably around... 1994 yeah at least because I've been making this recipe for at least that long and 
in the cookbook, it's called Sloppy Joe's. Okay, I wrote next to it, excellent. And I renamed it Flavored Meat. The reason I came up with this recipe is because at the time, I was in charge of concessions at my son's school for um, sports. And every year there was a very big tournament and always hit smack dab in January. Cold weather, horrible. You know, schools came from all over to participate in this weekend long um, tournament. And so they would always serve the same things, pizza, hot dogs, pizza, hot dogs. And when you're coming for a tournament and you're traveling to get there, especially if the weather is really poor, you want something more to feed your kids. And so when I took concessions over, I wanted to come up with something that was extremely versatile, that would be hearty, and that would really satisfy kids and adults. And so scanning through my cookbooks and thinking about what would be good, hearty, and really soothing for that time of year. Of course, we always have pizza and we can always throw hot dogs in the roaster, but I wanted something and I thought about baked potatoes, stuffed baked potatoes. I thought they're hearty, they're good, Everybody loves them. And so I came up with, I found this recipe that said Sloppy Joe's. Now, the majority of these types of cookbooks have all kinds of barbecue meat recipes, Sloppy Joe recipes. And basically what I noticed is they were about all the same. Most of them had uh, ketchup, mustard, um, vinegar, brown sugar, Worcestershire sauce, um, things of that nature. And always a good blend. So you could either make it for Sloppy Joe's or um, some of the recipes for hot dog toppings were all literally or pretty much the same with the same ingredients. So when I came across this particular recipe that said Sloppy Joe's, I read it and it said two and a half pounds of hamburger and if you'd like, you can jot this down because this is the recipe. And I don't want to get in trouble with any copyright, but this comes from Cooking with the Horse and Buggy People. And um, it's a book that I purchased on my own. Um, it doesn't have the name of an author in here. I'm trying to find that. It says it contains a variety of recipes from home. It's been submitted by Amish ladies of Holmes and Wayne counties. So, whatever that means. Um, but this isn't the recipe. This is the base of the recipe that I found. So I'm going to go through this. Um, two and a half pounds of hamburger. Um, two and a half tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, sauce. Half a cup of ketchup. One can, here's what got my attention, of mush cream of mushroom soup. One medium onion, chopped one third cup of brown sugar, and one tablespoon of mustard. And so I got to thinking, a can of cream of mushroom soup and sloppy joes. Okay, well, I had never heard of that. And looking at all of the other recipes that I've ever come across for sloppy joes or um, hot dog toppings or all that, it was, like I said, the basic. So the basic recipe would be Either, like I said, ketchup, mustard, Worcestershire sauce, um, um, cumin, all of that stuff. So I just kind of did a little experimenting because I was intrigued by the cream of mushroom soup. And I thought, ew, I'm not sure. So I made a small batch. And that small batch led to what I called flavored meat that I have typed up into my scrapbook that is still not complete, but almost. I think I'm down to maybe just having to finish my mac and cheese recipe, and I have this whole <coughs> scrapbook. Oops, let me remove that. I think I've showed this before of family recipes that I scrapped together, and um, 
I'm almost finished, so hopefully I'll get that done one of these years. But anyway, so I came up with this flavored meat recipe. It was a recipe that I came up with. I experimented at home, and I thought, how can I make this versatile so that I can serve this over baked potatoes, hot dogs, and nachos. So what I did was I took the base of that recipe and I did it in five pound increments, but the differences I added to it and what I added to give it a little bit of a flavored texture that would be not just strictly um, a Mexican dish and not just a bland dish, but a combination, and this is what I came up with. I added on my own ground cumin, a package of dry ranch buttermilk with bacon um, dressing mix, and if you can't find that, then I would just use a package of ranch dry mix. I've done that many times, and then added bacon bits to it and um, a package of taco seasoning, any flavor that you like, and basically salt and pepper. And so as the recipe reads now, and uh, this is my printed version of it, and this is for five pounds. This makes a good, good amount, but it freezes beautifully. So don't worry about it. And if you don't wanna make the five pounds, cut this in half. So what it is is, five pounds of ground beef, two cans of cream of mushroom soup, one cup of ketchup, one cup of barbecue sauce. I like the honey smoke flavor. It's really good in this particular recipe. One medium onion diced up. I felt like that was a good blend for the five pounds because you know how kids are sometimes with onions. Two thirds of a cup of packed brown sugar, two tablespoons of mustard, five tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce, one and a half tablespoons of ground cumin, um, one package of ranch buttermilk with bacon, dry dressing mix, um, and a half a package of the taco seasoning mix. Now, a half a package is pretty good. A whole package really overpowers it with that Mexican twist and that's fine if that's what you like. Um, so that's the basic recipe and what can I tell you? You brown your meat and you drain the fat off. Um, mix together your soup, ketchup, barbecue sauce, mustard, Worcestershire sauce, and then add your brown sugar, cumin, ranch dressing, and um, your taco seasoning mix and then Add it all to your browned meat, and what you want to do is simmer it on the stove for about 30 to 40 minutes, and it's done. It's that simple. It's that easy. Um, and the reason this is so good is, so the way we would serve it is this way. We would have um, chips, the tortilla chips, we had hot dogs, and then we had these baked potatoes. And we would slice the baked potatoes open and poof them up, and then we would serve a scoop of the flavored meat on top of the baked potatoes, a scoop of the flavored meat on top of a hot dog, a scoop of the flavored meat on top of nacho chips. And then we added um, things like um, cheddar cheese, shredded, melted cheese, like Mexican melted cheese, white or yellow, black olives cut up, sauteed mushrooms cut up, green scallions, um, and just extra shredded um, Colby cheese. Whatever you wanted, whatever you wanted to put on your hot dog, even if it was fresh chopped onions, and we would have that whole bar available, and whatever it is that you ordered, a potato, a hot dog, or nachos, that's how those were served. Now, I have also made this recipe several times for um, baby shower and wedding showers that I've hosted at my home. And these were pretty large showers with a lot of people. And instead of doing a variety, I just did baked potatoes. And what I would do is fix the baked potatoes, 
have my flavored meat, and then the condiments, I would have sauteed mushrooms, um, different variety of cheeses, um, scallions, onions, everything chopped up like that, black olives, green olives, and sour cream, um, a big crock pot full of melted uh, Mexican cheese, and just let everybody stuff their own baked potatoes. It's always a huge hit, a huge success, and something that everybody loves. So, I have company coming uh, at the end of the week, and I am going to mix up a batch of this, and I'm going to probably freeze a good portion of it, and we're going to serve it just basic over hot dogs and nacho chips. No big potatoes this time because it's just a little warm outside and I don't really want to do the oven, but I'll have all the toppings on it. And I promise you, you will love this recipe. Now, I'll show you all of the ingredients and how I put it together, but I'm not gonna sit there and video browning the meat and all that because you know how to do that, but it's that just that simple. Let me reiterate it again. It's brown your meat, and what I like to do is after I um I no I brown my meat, and then I go ahead and drain it off, and then I add my chopped onions and just you know get my onions till they're soft. I like to put salt and pepper and garlic. Those are my three things that I always flavor my meat with right on the meat after I've browned it. And then I like to mix in my bowl my wet ingredients, which are the barbecue sauce, the Worcestershire sauce, ketchup, mustard, throw it all together, mix it around, give it a good stir, and then add my dry ingredients, the brown sugar, um, taco seasoning mix, and the dry ranch mix. Now, um, and the cumin, if you want it spicy add something to spice it up I, I don't do that because I also want this to be served um, for kids and um, you know I don't really want them to turn their nose up to it so I just kind of keep it on that mild um, level so this flavored meat that I've named flavored meat not knowing what else to call it has a sweet and yet tangy um, bite to it. It's delicious, it's good, and honestly, I don't think I've ever heard anyone tell me they don't like it. Now, if some people don't prefer baked potatoes, not potato people, they tell me, love it on the nachos, or love it on a hot dog. Um, my favorite is the stuffed baked potato. I mean, it's just so good, so hearty. So I've served this for years at the um, tournaments, and I know to this day, and trust me, it's been over 20 years, they're still serving flavored meat with potatoes and nachos. Mm -hmm. Same recipe, I've passed it down to them. Um, I've made it for showers bridal showers, baby showers, when I'm hosting at my house and doing a big lunch. Um, I've made it for family visiting. I've made it for just us on a normal supper basis. I've even made it as a um, Advent dinner for church. So it's that good, it's that versatile, and it's easy. It's something that's super easy to whip up. You wanna keep it warm, put it in a crock pot then. You want to freeze it, it freezes beautifully. So I think you have a good recipe here if you'd like to try it. And uh, I'm excited to make it again because I haven't had it for a while. For Since I've moved, haven't had it. So it's a great recipe. So keep it in mind next time. And if you just want to do baked potato, do baked potato. If you want to just do a hot dog bar, do a hot dog bar. Use this as your meat topping. You will not be disappointed. So until next time. Uh, Hope you appreciate the choppiness of this video. I um, hope you'll give this a try. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Um, be kind, be humble, and age gracefully. Bye.